ShireSociety.com. Outlaw manicurist Mike Fisher. Real? Right, getting arrested. Teenage civil disobedience wizard Andrew Carroll. Just two of the pretty brilliant liberty activists who left New Hampshire after moving here. They're not the only ones, and it's going to happen again. Unfortunately, it seems like most of the time when this happens, people really do just disappear from New Hampshire. We'd never hear from them again or of them again. And maybe part of it's our fault. Maybe we don't do something that they need us to do while they're here. But I like the canning family approach better than any of the other departures that I've ever seen from New Hampshire. The cannings have stayed active and continued running the NH3.com site even after they had to leave. They got better work and they've uh, been advertisers on the Ridley Report since they've been gone. Uh, so it's really difficult for me to criticize in any way they're leaving because they're still, I mean, not quite as effective as they were while they were inside the state, but they're, they're still probably most more effective than most free staters inside New Hampshire. I think they're still active in the Liberty Scholarship Fund, which is totally New Hampshire-centric, but I guess the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that, it, it, if I, for instance, I had to leave New Hampshire for some reason and be gone for years or something like that, I would still, whatever activism I did, I'd still focus it on New Hampshire. I mean, there might be stuff that would happen right in front of me that I would take pictures of if I was in, you know, Kansas or something, but... My feeling is that no matter where I am, I benefit more by enhancing New Hampshire liberty than I do by enhancing the liberty where I am. Uh, I don't even think I can enhance liberty very much where I, where I am if I'm not in New Hampshire. The thing is, I think there's this phenomenon of, I mean, I call it the shining city on the hill phenomenon, for lack of an original term. But basically, you can do more for freedom by creating it in one place. I mean, that, I mean, the freedom that we create in New Hampshire, or that we renew in New Hampshire, has an effect on all 50 states. It's the most efficient place to aim your activism. But before I moved here, I guess it was two years I was a free stater before I moved to New Hampshire, and... I didn't do hardly any activism in Dallas. There was one or two things, and I, I don't even think those were worth doing. But I tell you what, the the time that I spent on the internet just uh, promoting Free State Project news on web forums was very useful. I mean, that got thousands of people talking about us. The letters to the editor that I wrote to the local paper about escaping, you know, moving to New Hampshire, that that worked out pretty well. I mean, I, I, you know, two people came to a meeting that I had in Colorado uh, when I when I posted, you know, I put a letter in the Gazette Telegraph, and then later on there was a meeting of Free Staters in Colorado, and there were people that showed up that had read the letter. I mean, you know, two people doesn't sound like a lot, but you normally when you send a letter to the editor to a newspaper, nothing happens. It just maybe changes people's opinion a little bit. But these folks actually, you know, showed up at, at the meeting. So, and, it, and of course we had a lot, a lot of other people that were at the meeting too. But. Um, more and more as I look at, like, you know, I did some, I did some Free State related meetings later on, uh, and it seemed like over time it was harder to get people to show up outside New Hampshire to meetings, where it's, it's very easy in New Hampshire. But there is this effect that, you know, when we do something in New Hampshire, people in other states do imitate us. You can't hang it from the overpass, that's the only issue. Oh, there's a lot of stuff I can't hold sign. And I, I, again, I'm not always in favor of the exact way they imitate us because sometimes people go out and get themselves in trouble in other states, which delays their move to New Hampshire. But it does say a lot about the inspirational effect that you guys are having who have moved to New Hampshire. In a sense, it's almost too much of a good thing. People, when they see us doing something, they're almost too eager to get out there and uh, uh, poke the bear. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is whether you're leaving New Hampshire or whether you can't get here yet, consider continuing your New Hampshire activism or starting it early. If you don't know what to do, if you can't think of anything, well, I've got about 20 ideas for you and so do some other people, and we've listed those uh, at, well, there's a link that if you go to the video description, you'll see the link. Just click on it. 
that's a list of ways you can help New Hampshire activism for free, even from outside New Hampshire. For liberty to work around the world, we have to create a model here that works and to promote that model. It's been done before. It was called the old United States. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.